Hello fellow Scratchers! You may have seen my previous tutorial, Amazing Health Bars, where we created each health level using its own costume. But so many of you wanted more, asking how can we create a health bar with a beautiful, fluid animation, from full to empty, without those predefined steps. And it just so happens, I know a really cool trick to achieve just that. Before you ask, no, it's not using pen, because then we wouldn't be able to layer our health bar over other vector sprites like this. And we want this looking super crisp and high res at all times. Yes, this looks sweet, so how's it done? And this is clever. The health bar is simply made up of two sprites. The base costume is a fixed, half full health bar. Layered on top of that, we have another half bar and this one we slide left and right. When combined with the lower bar, this gives us a flexible 50-100% to health bar. How cool is that? But how do we explain the lower half? Well now, once we reach the halfway mark, we cunningly switch from a half full bar costume to half an empty bar costume, and with this we continue sliding it down over the remaining base health bar, literally blanking it out as we go. Brilliant! So stay tuned as I guide you through the coding process, but in essence, you should have got the gist. I really like this technique as it only requires three costumes to accurately reproduce any level of health the base, the empty, and the full costumes. Plus, because this health bar is costume-based, we can decorate and enhance it to fit any game genre, like those you might see in today's video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I've always had a soft spot for great-looking games, and this mobile game, it's like a true console-level experience on your phone. Raid has more than 600 champions, blessed with their own unique skills, making for endless fun assembling, developing, and equipping your dream team. My top three champions are Cleopteryx, yeah, because she reminds me of a griffin. Ha! <laughs> no bias there then. Then there's Humdig, an awesome legendary dwarven king who packs a punch with some serious firepower. And finally there's Nekaret the Great. He may be a bit spooky, but hey, it's that time of year. Talking of which, right now Raid is running an amazing trick-or-treat promotion, Halloween, where you can win a bunch of real-life and in-game prizes, including a thousand dollar Amazon gift cards and some of the best epic and legendary Halloween champions in Raid. And it's all free. All you need is your Raid player ID, so download Raid with my link in the description, then head to trickortreat.plarium.com to spin the wheel and get your prize. This special event runs October 15th to November 5th. Only new players can win a prize, but this Dark Rises promo code is available available to both new and existing players until October 25th, with a whole bunch of free items to instantly level any of your strongest champions all the way to level 50. Five Star Ascension. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen. You'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Tyrell, 200k silver, one energy refill and one XP boost, and one ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Okay, so we've covered the theory. If you want to go away and try to work out the scripts yourselves, then wonderful. Take a moment to smash the like button on my video first, and then come back to watch the rest of the video later. Otherwise, let's just breeze through how I went about it right now. Guys, let's get scratching! Start a new project. Now we're keeping the Scratch Cat sprite today, but let's make it draggable on the stage. When green flag clicked, and set drag mode to draggable. And that's in the sensing category, I'm not sure why. And now we can drag the cat around in full screen mode. Nice! Next, let's define how much health our cat has. Make two new variables for this, max health for all sprites. This is how much health our cat has when they are full. I'm going to set this to 200. Loads of health. The next variable we need is the actual health variable, so call that health, again for all sprites, and set health to max health, so they begin fully charged. Lastly, right click the health variable reporter and change it to a slider. This will make testing nice and easy. We just need to set the slider range to be from 0 to 200, that matches our max health. Great, I'll name this sprite Player. And we can move on to create the health bar itself. Create a new sprite, naming it Health Bar. 
Okay, so drawing this health bar is actually probably the hardest part of this process, because to make sure everything lines up and overlaps we have to be super accurate. So take your time and don't worry if it takes a few tries to get it right. To make lining things up easier I'm going to switch to bitmap mode, and then zoom right in close. And with the rectangle tool and a solid black fill, count six squares to the left of center, and one square up. And being super careful that it is perfectly aligned, draw the rectangle so that it continues another six squares to the right and one down of center. Take the time now to double check your box edges are perfectly in line with the background grid. If not you'll have to make adjustments. Cool, this next bit is more fiddly. Now with a red fill I'm going to use the brush tool at size 2 to just mark the edge of this costume. This is a size guide if you need it, but when you get used to using Scratch's paint editor you may not need to do that at all. And so with the solid rectangle tool we draw the inside bar, leaving that same one pixel border all the way around. We need to stop exactly at the halfway point here. Wow, I wish we had some scratch drawing tools to help us line this all up. Right, with that done I'll just delete that little square. Beautiful, let's name this costume Face. So this needs just a few scripts to position it correctly above the player sprite. I know you guys don't need me for this bit. When flag clicked, set costume to Face. Set size to 300 for this video, but set this to any size you want. And then we want it to go to front of the other sprites, so go to front. And then to ensure it moves with the player, forever, go to player. Of course we don't want this plonked right on top of the player like this, so add in a change Y by 70. That's better. Next up we need that funky sliding health sprite. Come back into the health bars costume editor and duplicate the base costume. Then with the selection marquee tool carefully select and delete the right hand half of the costume. I just hit the delete key to delete it. Then do the same for the leftmost edge too. Right, we'll come back to this but for now duplicate the costume again. This costume needs moving a full costume width to the left, and this is not a mean feat. What I would recommend is again using the brush to paint a marker where the current costume ends, and then use the marquee tool, select and drag the main costume over to the left, making sure to hold the shift key down whilst dragging to keep the costume on a perfect horizontal level, and drop it lined up with that dot. Nice, remove the dot, and we should be able to switch back and forth and confirm it's all lined up correctly. Ok, the hard work is over, phew, let's name the costume Full, and clicking back into our second costume we can fill this pure black, because this costume is our empty costume. Great. So you may have guessed we are going to use a clone to make the sliding health bar rather than a separate sprite. Drop in the create clone of myself just before we begin the forever loop, and then when I start as a clone we can duplicate the same forever loop up here so both health bars are doing the same thing, one in front of the other. Now a clone is always created one layer behind the sprite that created it. So it makes sense for the clone to be the base health bar, in which case we'll drop a switch costume to full just after creating our clone, so that the first loop is now handling the sliding top bar. If we smash the green flag you'll see that we have managed to position the sliding sprite way off to the left. Don't worry, this was intentional. To get it to full health we just need to slide it a full health bar's width to the right in which case we need to know exactly how wide our health bar actually is. Checking in the costume editor, it's 48 pixels. 
but that is the width including the black outline on either side. The inside rectangle is therefore 2 pixels smaller, bringing that down to 46 pixels in width. We'll make a new variable to store the width in, naming it width for this sprite only, and we'll set width to the 46 pixels. But don't forget we've set the size of our sprite to 300%, that's three times bigger. We need to do the same to this width variable. The sprite size divided by 100 is 3. Cool. So multiply 46 by that to get the full width of the health bar on the stage. That's 138. So change x to move the floating health bar to the right by the width. Ooh, I changed the costume when I went into the editor. Uh, click the green flag to reset everything. And there, we've got our full health bar at last. Nice work. But full health is only the first step. Now we want this to slide back to the left, as the actual health variable is decreased towards zero. To make that easier, we'll introduce a new variable, naming it percent, for this sprite only. Rather than having a health from zero to 200, we'll represent it as a number from zero to one. We can do this by setting percent to the result of dividing the player's current health by their max health. If we run that now you'll see that at full health percent is 1 and at no health percent is 0. Great, because all we then need to do is alter this change x, multiplying width by this percent. If we run that now you can see how bringing the health bar towards the midpoint correlates to the midpoint of the actual health bar. So cool! But any further and disaster! The bar overflows the bottom of the bar and looks really really weird. But if all is well, all we need to do is switch our costumes over at this point to the empty bar costume. If else… and we need to check we are below half health. That's when percent is less than 0 0.5, half health. Drop a switch costume into both sides. And if they are less than half health, then switch to the empty costume to start removing now from the health bar. Otherwise, leave the costume on the full costume as that already worked great for the upper part of the health bar. We can now drop that in just after we set the percent here. Okay then, we are good to give this a try. Things are looking good as we drop the health down. And even past the halfway mark, yes, that is now working amazingly. Do you see that? The empty costume is surely doing its job. And we could drag the cat and everything stays perfectly in sync. I just love that. You know, one last touch is to cycle the colour of the bar from green to orange and to red as the health decreases. You don't need to do this, but just in case, here is how I did it. Both the base, sprite, and the clone need to be positioned, these scripts. And then both change colour. So let's make a new custom block naming it position bar and run without screen refresh. And take our top three blocks from the main forever loop, go to player, change y by 70 and set percent. The rest can stay in the main loop but move these three blocks under the new define block. A position bar block can then of course be placed back at the top of the main loop. Ok, so the second forever loop is doing the same job as our define here, so replace those two with a position bar block. We can sanity check it still works. Yeah, great. So now since both sprites are using the same script, we can set the colour in here to affect both sprites at once. Set colour effect to, and we multiply percent with 50, because this should take us all the way from red through to green. Yeah, that looks excellent. And what's more, as we slide the health variable down, the colour changes back towards red. Pretty sweet, right? So we are done. Pretty much. But this clever approach does have a couple of snags. Firstly, 
if I just shift this bar around a little, somewhere around here. Ah, oh, look, where did this line suddenly appear from? Nasty. You may not see this on your project, but it's caused by me zooming my web browser larger to make this video. Things just don't always quite line up as expected in Scratch. The only fix I can suggest is to add a tiny half pixel bit of red to the right of the base costume. You'll see that straight away fixes the gap problem. But when we reduce the health, we now see that extra bit of bar on the right. So to fix that, we come into the empty costume and expand the black by half a pixel to the right also. And that, that pretty much does it. But there is a second issue, and that is the sprite fencing. As we move off screen, the floating bar gets left behind. Ugly like an ugly thing. We fix that in one of the usual ways. In the costume editor, make a new costume and draw a large rectangle. Name the costume Big. Then back in the code, we simply swap to the big costume before we position the bar. That will let us move further off screen, and right away we are switching back to the desired costume anyway, so all should be good. Give that a try if you don't believe me. See? Bug squashed. Great. Isn't it amazing what you can do with a little clever scripting and careful costume drawing? And don't think you have to finish there. You can spruce things up even further. Try adding another layer like this. Or vertical gradient fill. Whatever you want to try. But for now, that is about all we have time for today. If you've enjoyed the video, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss my next exciting video. Until next time, have a great week ahead and scratch on, guys.